Good evening, greater peace. Good evening, greater peace. Good evening, greater peace. Are we ready for revival tonight? Are you ready for revival tonight? Hallelujah. Weren't we blessed on last night? If you were blessed last night, can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Thank God. We, we expect God to take us even higher and higher on tonight. I'm going to ask that you rest on your feet. Stand with us on tonight as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship and for revival. We want to set the atmosphere, amen, for us to be able to receive whatever it is that we need on tonight, amen. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for tonight. We were reminded on yesterday to give you thanks for today. So God, for today, we say thank you. For today, we say thank you. For today, we say thank you. Oh God, we're grateful for how you kept us all day long, covered in your precious blood, clothed in our right mind. Thank you for every blessing that you've given us on today. You allowed us to come into your house one more time. And God, we say thank you. We, you allowed us to look upon the faces of the people that we love. And oh God, we say thank you. You gave us the use and activity of our limbs, oh God. And we say thank you. God, I can lift my voice tonight and I say thank you. I can wave my hands tonight and I say thank you. I feel better in my body on tonight, oh God. And I want to say thank you. Somebody in the congregation on tonight, oh God, is in need, oh God. Somebody needs something and somebody needs something else, oh God. But I know you to be a God that can do anything but fail. So I ask in the name of Jesus that you meet every need, oh God. Meet us where we are, oh God, and take us higher and higher in you, oh God. I ask those that are tired, oh God, give them strength in their body in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for strength in this place, oh God. I pray for peace in this place, oh God. I pray for joy in this place on tonight. Touch now, God, the man of God that will bring the word on tonight. Let us have open ears and open hearts and open minds to receive what you have for us on tonight. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, let us clap our hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. For the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Yeah. Amen. And we're here to worship the Lord. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, you're not clapping. Put those hands together. Everybody.
above every name the name that we receive healing from we live that name do you know that name tonight what is that name what's that name come on shout it out loud tonight yes Lord Hallelujah. bless your name Jesus Woo, you are the yes you are God this is one of my favorite songs it says we love to call your name is something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your
power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name. Everybody, there is power. There is power yeah. in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in the name. Yeah, there is power there in the power name. Power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in the name. Yes, these change. Change, change.
Say ruler, 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 ruler. That's what he is. He's a ruler, 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 ruler. Oh. All of God's children that know who Jesus is said amen, amen, and amen. Just look at someone next to you and tell them it's good to see you. Tell them good evening. It's good to see you. Tell them we made it. We pretty much made it. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. As always, yet yeah, this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it it's just good to be in the lord's house one more time amen and we're grateful for this man of god that blessed us so richly on last night amen we're glad that he's back for another round amen and so we thank god for you all that are here with us tonight we thank god that you come back to be a part of this in-person worship experience we're grateful for peace nation amen we thank god for you all we see you out there we thank god that you've joined us we pray that you've shared that you've tagged at least five people and told them that peace tv yet is on the air amen we don't want to trouble you long we want to hurriedly get out of your way so this man of god can bless us again tonight amen and so um it is yet giving time in the house of the lord amen we're grateful for three and a half cheerful givers is giving time in the house tonight amen we ask if you'll be willing to give your 25 dollar revival assessment for those that are watching virtually amen that's blessed last night Bless again so far tonight that a part of peace nation um that eat of the word here amen and just love worship here we pray that you'll sow a seed either cash app text to give or give lafay cash app is dollar sign peace gives amen dollar sign peace gives amen and we want you to please be a blessing as always i say if wherever you eat that's where you ought to give you can't eat at bonefish and give it carabas and so if you're blessed by the word here we pray that you'll give here sow a seed again members leaders leaders members let us remember again our 25 dollar revival assessment amen and for those that are in Peace Nation, those that are guests, amen. Those that are watching, if you want to sow that seed, we'll be greatly appreciative as well. Amen for our spring revival. For those that are in the house that are giving via device, text to give or give I just raise your device. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Again, Peace Nation, for those that are watching this now, maybe even later on tonight, you're able to give via Givelify. Amen. Cash App or text to give. For Cash App, put your name in the comments as well as Revival Offering. Amen. Give Levi a Revival Offering, Revival Assessment is there at the top for your giving. Our team has on the screen where you can give safely and securely via Cash App, text to give or Give Levi. Amen. Amen. So I want you to give tonight. I want you to give tonight. Sow that seed wherever you oh, are tonight. Sow that seed tonight. Jesus promised he'll take care of me. Oh, how marvelous it is. Jesus promised he'll take care of me. Amen, amen, amen.
Jesus promised he'll take care of me. We pray that you're giving tonight. You're sowing that seed. You're sowing that seed tonight. Amen. We pray you're sowing that seed tonight. Oh, how wonderful it is. Jesus promised he'll take care of me. Oh, how marvelous it is. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for sowing your seed. Let us pray. God, we say thank you tonight for every giver, every tither, every seed sower. God, we're grateful for their giving on tonight. Amen. We're grateful for them sowing that seed. Now bless them in their giving that they shall not go lacking because of their giving, but bless them because of their obedience. Bless us all for stretch it. Now use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for your giving. Again, we're grateful for you all being yet in the house, our guests. Amen. Again, Peace Nation, so good to see again my brother in the bond, brother Herman Lewis in the back. Give him a hand of celebration. Good to see you, big brother. Amen, amen, amen. Where's Sister Long? Amen. There she goes. Amen, amen. The flyer went out and she posted it. I, I saw it online last night, but I'm going to be in the house tonight. Amen. I, I saw you on Facebook. Thank you for coming. Thank all of you all. So good to see Josh back. Amen. Good to see you, my brother. Thank again, Ra. Amen. Listen, we're hurling getting out of your way. Amen. The praise team is going to come and give us now. Amen. Our sermonic selection. And then afterwards, amen. Again, you will hear none other than Reverend Dr. Charles Goodman. Amen. The great pastor of the Tabernacle Baptist Church there in Augusta, Georgia. Amen. One church in three locations. He has two in Augusta and getting ready to open up a third in South Carolina. One of our nation's best preachers, one of our nation's best pastors, my friend and my brother who I love dearly. Amen. Give him a hand as he prepares to come after this shamanic selection and give us our word for tonight. We pray that you'll type in the comments. Let someone know the word of God is coming. Change me, oh God. Make me more like you. Change me. me through and through create in me a clean you yes Lord change change me oh God make me more like you yeah oh change me change me oh Lord, through and through, yes, create in me a clean, a clean heart, Woo, yes, Lord, so that I Worship you. I need you to change me. Yes. Like only you can, Lord. Yes. Change me. Oh, I need you to, Lord. Yes. Change me. Oh, wash me through and through, Lord. Yeah. Change me. Oh, I need you to, Lord. Lord, I need, I need you, you to change me, Lord. Change me. Yes, Father, I need you to, yeah.
This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice. Let me try that one more time. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice. I don't have no choice but to give him glory and to give him honor. He's been just that good to me. Will you worship the Lord in prayer with me tonight? God, we thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. We thank you for your sustaining power that has been evident in our lives. We're grateful that in spite of our lack of faith, you remain faithful. And we give you glory and praise and honor. 
We thank you for this moment that you've allowed us to come. Not because we have been so good, but because you are good. And we thank you for the gathering of revival that reinvigorates our heart and helps us to reimagine ways for us to honor you. So we bless you for this church and this pastor, this wonderful people that you have convened in this wonderful place called the Greater Peace. And we pray now, God, that you'll once again allow us strength and glory to be able to honor you. Now, God, I stand in need. Send the anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy tonight. And we'll be so mindful to give you all the glory and all of the praise. Have your way tonight. Remind somebody that the blood still works. And you still can't forgive. Bless us afresh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, clap those hands. If God has been good to you, clap those hands. If there is nobody like Jesus, come on, bless his holy name. And while we're celebrating our Savior, can we thank God for your pastor, my friend and my brother. Come on, let's thank God for Pastor Corey Neal tonight. Oh, come on, Greater Peace. You can do a whole lot better than that. Man, that is my friend and my brother. I'm grateful for him and his life and what he has meant to me throughout the years. He has been consistent. He's been a just dear friend and brother to his lovely wife. God bless you. Good to see Sister Neil with us tonight. And, uh, and to the wonderful leadership and fellowship of the Greater Peace Church, amen. It's just good for us to be back here, amen. Y'all family, so amen. This is our family reunion revival, amen. And we're grateful for the opportunity to come and to share. To those who share in their respective places, once again, let me just express my just sincere admiration uh, for your pastor who just invites me to come and share and I I never take those lightly I never take invitations lightly and I'm grateful uh, for the trust that has been given throughout the years and I am just honored and humble man continue to be who God has called you to be I, I just want you to know that and I always be here for you and I know vice the same so God bless you amen amen good to see Pastor Flake with us tonight and others who are great luminaries dignitaries amen who are with us on tonight there is a word found in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. It's a simple word that simply goes this way. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think, according to the power that works within us, unto him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Once again, Ephesians 3 and 20 and 21. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think according to the work power, power and to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. For the time that we have on this last night of revival, I want to preach from this thought tonight. A praise goes right here. A praise goes right here lift those hands toward heaven and say lord speak we need to hear what an odd place to put a praise break those of you who know anything about this particular passage it is the portion where paul lifts up a midstream doxology if you know anything about the book of the ephesians its main theme and thrust for which paul is trying to examine and share as he's given to this people in the proximity of a town and village by the name of Ephesus, it has a simple idea, and that is to understand the power and the unity that is provided through the work of God, through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that produces the church. That was his real aim, because when you study the book of Ephesians, you'll know that it's one of the few letters that Paul writes that was not based upon some conflict or confrontation. It was simply a word of encouragement that the work that God was doing in them was simply because of the work God had already done for them. That's what makes Ephesians a powerful message for us to read. But it is filled with that kind of theological understanding. It is six chapters where it is once again not just sharing what we should be as a church, but how the church should respond and the church should act. But halfway through it in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, it almost seems as if Paul pauses in the midst of it to give God some praise. 
Now, I know there were some, my brothers and sisters, who probably would have some issues with that because if, according to your understanding and if it was your protocol, you would assume that he should wait to the end of the letter. Wait till the matter has been concluded. Wait till everything has been settled. But Paul breaks protocol. He provides a midstream, midterm, halftime praise break. And in the middle of this moment, he shares this amazing doxology that lifts up our understanding of who God is and what God has done. I want to share with you tonight that I believe that doxologies, which is a major part of Paul's writing, is important for us to learn tonight because he teaches us that there is no good doxology without good theology. That's one of the aims that he writes because his doxology is chock full of things. He's not just praising with ignorance, but he's praising God with information based on his experience with God. So whenever you see doxologies in scripture, what you begin to understand, number one, they are portions of transitions. They're, they're exits where we see sometimes a thought is about to shift. Paul will use doxologies as moments where he wants to shift the train of thinking. He uses doxologies as transitions, but he doesn't just use them for transitions. Transitions, but he also uses them based upon theology because it is here we hear some of the major doctrines and themes of scripture. He talks about the omniscience of God, the sovereignty of God, the glory of God. And I want you to know something today, my brothers and sisters, uh, that if we are going to be strong disciples, we need to have some strong theology. You need to know if my grandmother could testify that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know exactly who and what the Lord has done. It's not just about transition. It is not just about theology. But I would also offer that this doxology to me also shows us the personal relationship that Paul has with God. Because when you read the book of Ephesians, on one hand, he's a professor as he shares the information concerning God. On the other hand, he's a pastor because he prays for the people that he's writing for but he's not just a professor and a praiser but he's also one who has an intimate relationship with God and what I appreciate about Paul tonight is that Paul teaches us that you just can't write about God you gotta know about God you can't just sing about God you gotta know about God you can't just preach about God you gotta know about God and that's the aim my brothers and sisters tonight because as we look at what takes place in this passage matter of fact this praise break comes after a moment of intimate praise prayer when you read Ephesians chapter 3 14 through 19 Herman uh, you'll note that it's a personal prayer that he's talking to God on behalf of the people uh, not like the first prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 which was about enlightenment but this prayer in Ephesians 3 was about enablement because in Ephesians chapter 3 14 through 19 what he's trying to convey uh, is there's some things that only God can do in your life if you get a chance uh, and on your way home you should go ahead and read Ephesians 3 14 and 19 uh, because it concerns to it shares with us how God strengthens us how God roots us and how God feels us I need to say that again here in his prayer time he's reminding the people that there's some things that only God can do only God can strengthen us only God can root us in his immeasurable love and only God can fill us with his power and on the heels of that tremendous prayer it seems as if Paul just has an upspring of adoration it seems that in this moment all of a sudden after praying and talking about God he couldn't help but come up with some good doxology that doxology simply said now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think according to the power that's working in us unto him be the glory in the church and in Christ forever and ever amen and I want to suggest tonight that's all I simply came as we conclude this revival that I want to say that Paul would tell you that every time you think about God Ought to, ought to be a moment for you to put some praise right there when you consider his ways when you consider his way when you consider how he's shown up and shown out everywhere you are I don't care you can be on your job a praise grows right there you can be in the middle of a church service and praise goes right there you can be sitting on the side of your bed and a praise goes right there I want to tell you tonight that Paul shares us that there is no good doxology without some good theology that's my aim tonight
because I can already tell I've only convinced about a third of y'all tonight the importance of, of giving God praise and I know I've been pastoring uh, you and your cousins for a long period of time and I know there's some under the sound of my voice uh, who would make the declaration it don't take all that I don't I don't think so pastor I don't know why we need to be so expressive in worship I don't know why we need to wave our hands and open our mouth we too sophisticated for that we too educated for that well let me share tonight that in all of his education all of his sophistication even Paul understood that God is worthy of some praise so I see y'all don't need me you need me to convince you tonight so let me share uh, uh, some of the things that this uh, doxology shares for us today because it just paints the portrait uh, and picture of God in a way uh, that teaches us why we should give God some praise here's the first thing uh, I need you to jot down in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 and 21 uh, that we should give God praise right here watch this based upon number one uh, the indisputable persona of God that's what the text says now unto him I wish I had time but I want to suggest watch what takes place in the passage uh, that he uses that phrase now he he's in the middle of prayer pastor flake but all of a sudden uh, he sees the immediacy and the emergency of the moment he uses that critical word uh, by the name of now he says in the midst of praise uh, in the midst of prayer now stop whatever you're doing now speaks of a present moment now speaks of a time that wherever you are whether you're past present or future now means right now it means uh, that you ought to make your attention spend uh, your focus uh, in this moment what is Paul saying we need to have a now moment concerning uh, he says now unto him okay let me try it again he says now unto him now I know I don't have to convince many of you who the him is uh, that Paul is speaking about in the passage but he's talking about this sovereign this omniscient uh, this grand God he says now unto him but watch what he says he qualifies who the him is by saying now unto him that is able in other words he begins to suggest that this is not just some ordinary him uh, but he's a him that is able he is uh, speaking about the position and the capacity and the potential and the problem solving power of an almighty God he says now unto him that is able and if y'all weren't gonna push me so hard tonight somebody can testify that you've experienced the ableness of God you've seen how God is able to do you've seen that God is able you understand about his ableness because it is his ableness that once again shows how much God he really is Paul is hearkening back here my brothers and sisters to which was a theme in their Hebrew Bible where they would understand that this phrase of God meant that he was a God that was in total control he was a God that sits high but looks low he's a God that works things out on behalf of his people that whenever they would hearken back to moments they could testify of the ableness of God when they were stuck in captivity of Egypt it was the ableness of God that got them out of Egypt when they were facing what seemed like an inconquerable Red Sea it was the ableness of God that allowed them them to walk through when they were finding themselves uh, in the pain of the wilderness it was the ableness of God uh, that made bitter water sweet that gave them manna in the morning uh, that allowed them to experience the grandeur and the power of God my brothers and sisters uh, when he says now unto him that's able he's remembering what God has already uh, done and I can already tell some of y'all in greater peace uh, can't express I can't have no experience uh, over what the Holy Rich says but let me ask you your own personal testimony have you ever seen God be able for you? Have you ever seen God do something uh, that you can't do for yourself? Somebody can testify now unto him that's able, able to wake me up this morning, uh, able to get me started upon my way, able to be able to heal my body, lean over and touch somebody and tell them uh, he's an able kind of God. In essence, what Paul is declaring here is that there is nobody like God. Which means because of his ableness, that means he's always present in times of need. And I don't know who I need to preach to tonight, but somebody needs to look back over your life and testify he's always been there. there through the high times he's been there, through the low times he's been there. There is something about the ableness of God. I remember Pastor Neil when I was coming up in school. Uh, one of the things that they would do in the start of the day is that the teacher would always do this thing called call the roll. That that was significant before they would get the lesson started. 
They wanted to call the roll. They, they needed to make sure uh, who was there. So they would start calling names to see who was there. So they'll start calling name Corey. And if Corey was there, he'll say present. Betty was there. Betty would say present. Charles was there. Charles would say present. But there will be some moments when some students were not in the class. If they're not in class, they couldn't speak for themselves. But you know how we as kids are. We're going to yell out that they absent. Because it was noticeable when they were not there. So they'll call on some name Mary and then Mary not be there. We say absent. Because we were signifying at this moment that that person was not present. They were absent. Can I ask you a question tonight? When you call the role on God's position and presence in your life. Can I testify there has never been a time that I've been able to say God's been absent that every time I look back over my life at every critical junction highs uh, and laws here's the one thing I can testify he's always uh, been present made a way he was present when I had to go through the cancer diagnosis he was present when I had to go through the hurt problems he was present is there anybody here tonight that can testify he's always been present he's always shown up he's always been an able time of God we give God praise because of the indisputable persona of God. But it's not just the indisputable persona of God that he lifts up in this doxology. But he also, number two, lifts up the incalculable power of God. Because note what he shares here is now unto him that is able, watch this, to do. See, it's one thing to be able. It's another thing to do. Able speaks of capacity. Able speaks of potential. But to do means they're willing to act upon the capacity for which they have. See, there's a lot of people that you know that have some ability. But just because you got the ability don't mean that you do something with the ability. But Paul says, now unto him that is able to do. What is he able to do? Exceedingly. Abundantly. More than you can ask or think. Let me park here real quick. Notice what Paul is saying in this moment. He begins in this moment of intimate fellowship and prayer to God. He begins to think about the immeasurable power of God. And the only way he can explain, he said, let me tell you how big God is. Is that whatever you can ask, he's bigger than that. Whatever you can think, he's bigger than that. Which means, my brothers and sisters, no matter the size of your prayers, uh, they still pale in comparison uh, to who God really is. I wish I had time to push it tonight because if you knew what that meant, then you would really stretch yourself when it came to what you required uh, from God. Some of us are minimizing a God uh, that can do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask out of your mouth and think what's going on in your mind. Look at somebody and tell them that's what kind of great God we serve. But, but when I think about it, watch Paul, because I will readily admit to you tonight, preachers, I am, I am a, a literary um, a crush on Paul, the way he writes his phrases and words. Because I know you read them in the English, but when he puts these phrases together exceedingly, abundantly, more, this honestly is odd because as well educated as Paul is, for him to mix match these words together really makes no sense. Because by themselves, they would seem to be sufficient. If God could just do more, that's sufficient. If God could do abundantly, that's sufficient. If God can do exceedingly, that's sufficient. But he decides to use the biggest words he can find and mashes them together to try to explain the grandeur and the power of our God. He can do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ask or think okay if, if I was putting this on a Greek chart what he's simply saying is he can do all above all more above all abundantly above all exceedingly above all the best way I could frame this is he can do beyond beyond what you think he can do more of which means every time you try to put a cap on God, he keeps pulling the cap off and going beyond that. I wish I had some witnesses that could help me understand. He says that that's the only way I can explain it. It's so immeasurable. It's so incalculable. The only way I can make it make sense is I got to put some words together that seals like overkill. He can do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think. But watch this. According to the power that's worketh in us. He says, all right, since, since I can't explain it to you verbally, 
He said, let me try to explain it to you with power. Term he uses here is dunamis in the Greek, which is uh, that word for power, but that word worketh is the word for energy. What he says is that God has already proven his exceedingly abundantly more power because he's already shown it in how we've experienced it in the works of God. What do you mean? Ephesians chapter 1. He uses this power, is the same power that got Jesus out of the grave. He says this is one way that we see that it's exceedingly abundantly more power was manifested because Jesus, who was dead, on the third day was raised up by God. In Ephesians chapter 2, he says that same power again is manifested by bringing those who were far from God, the Gentiles, to those who were close to God, the Jews. And he brought them together in this gathering called the church. He said that don't make no sense, but that shows us the manifestation of God's power. He said if you want to know how powerful God is, he got Jesus out of the grave and he put people together in the church, which means that he got exceedingly abundantly more power than you could ever imagine. I wish I had time because what he literally saying here's why you ought to give God praise because that same power that he got Jesus out the grave that same power that brought the church together that same power is not just working for you but it's also working in you he literally uses that same phrase as grace because we have such a thing called sustaining grace and saving grace. Saving grace is when God has saved you. But he said it's his sustaining grace that's working in you, which means you ain't just got to thank God for what he's already done. But he's doing some stuff right now on the inside of you. See, some of y'all keep looking at your circumstances and you keep seeing where you are. But do you know how much power you got? on the inside do you know how much God has invested on the inside of you I don't care what side of the track you work on oh I don't care what side of the track you come from God has trusted his power to be evident and to be manifested in your life look at somebody next to you say neighbor if you only knew the powerful person you were sitting next to if you only knew what God has invested in me because the same power that got Jesus out of the grave is the same power that's still active and working on the inside of me be careful child of God because you're sitting next to somebody that got all power based upon what God has placed in me I get it, I get it. Um, um, the challenge with so many of us is we fail to appreciate the power working in us and part of the challenge is why it's hard for us to understand it is because we haven't tapped into that power and just because you ain't tapped into it don't mean it's not there. But I get it because most of us only equate power to the limitations for which our secular minds can comprehend. I'm born in 1979, but I will admit to you that I am a 90s baby. 90s is the best decade in the history of humanity. Had the best TV shows. Had the best music. Argue with your mama, I promise you. The 90s was the best decade. Also had some of the best TV commercials. I can sit here and recall some of the best TV commercials. And y'all, one of the most popular TV commercials of the 90s was done by Energizer Battery. It was the commercial about the Energizer Bunny. Y'all know the Energizer Bunny. It was simply we going in the commercial and then all of a sudden do a little pirouette in the middle of commercial. And all you hear the tagline, it keeps going and going and going. Well, y'all, I was... I was Still young at the time when I saw it. And y'all, I wanted to see if the Energizer battery commercial was truly as, as saying what it was going to do. So I had my grandfather take me to the store. I picked up some Energizer batteries and, and I put it in my little toy car. And y'all, here's what's crazy. That thing worked really good the first couple of days I had. I was running that thing full throttle. It was boom, going down the street. But y'all, as the weeks would go on, the car wouldn't work as fast. Until after a few weeks, can I be honest with y'all, that toy, toy car died. Yeah, I was heartbroken. I decided to write a letter because I was going to start a class action suit against the Energizer battery company because they told me that it keeps going and going and going. And I was under the assumption that I believe that since it promised to give all power, then it should be able to give all power. 
And my brothers and sisters, some of us feel the same way because uh, you keep equating God's power with human power. Here's uh, what you need to understand. Paul is saying this is where you need to get off that secular understanding and move to your supernatural understanding is because the power that's been invested inside of us will never run out. You uh, don't have to get it recharged. You don't have to pick it up off the target shelf. You don't have to order it off of Amazon. This is something that God has invested in you. Why? Because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He says, praise goes right here. Watch this. Because of the indisputable persona of God. Praise goes right here because of the incalculable power of God. But here's the third thing, my brothers and sisters. We give God praise right here because of the inexhaustible prestige of God. And to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Okay, y'all missed it. I'm trying to help you. Okay. He says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think according to the power that works in us. But then he moves, but unto him be the glory. I can see why you don't shout about it. Because that's the shift in the doxology. Because the first half deals with God's gift of grace. Now unto him that is able. To do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. But then it shifts from us getting grace to us giving God glory. See, the only exchange that needs to take place is since he's given us this incalculable grace, you need to give him an exhaustible glory. That the only way that we can honor the grace he's given us is that in return we ought to give him some glory. I'm trying to help you here. That's, that's what he says. Unto him be the glory. But this term glory, my brothers and sisters, is a weight measurement. It's, it's not something that's light. He says that, that after all God has done for us, you ought to give him something heavy. You ought to give him something that's weighty. You, you ought to give him something substantial. You, you ought to give him something that just ain't some patty cake. You, you ought to give him something that got some weight to it. That's what I wish I had some people that knew something about glory. Because glory, my brothers and sisters, is literally when you're creating something that's strong compared to the grace God has given to you. He says, unto him be the glory. Watch this. In the church and in Christ Jesus. If I had more time, I would tell you this is the only doxology that includes the church. The other doxology always talk about giving God glory in Christ or through Christ. Paul adds something here. He says because the glory is also manifested in church and in Christ. What are you saying here, Paul? He says, well, here's the reality is, my brothers and sisters, uh, that the main priority of the church ought to be to give God some glory. Oh, I'm about to get in trouble because I know there's some of you tonight who have already assumed that church is about your preferences. And so we come to church based upon our titles and we come to church based on what we want church to be like. But that is not the chief aim and priority of church. Church, my brothers and sisters, is not about your preferences. It's about God's purposes. Which means that our chief aim when we come to church is not predicated on where you sit and who sing this and who preach that. But our chief aim when we come the church uh, is to make sure that we give God uh, some glory I wish I had some people here tonight because I don't know why you came if you ain't come uh, to give not no glory I don't know why you show up week after week if you don't come to give God no some glory you didn't come because uh, you got some nice outfit that you want to wear you didn't come uh, because you got a solo to sing you didn't come uh, because you just want to hear some good preaching which you get each and every week but you ought to come uh, because this is my opportunity uh, to give God uh, some glory Glory. I tell you to look up and down your row and say, neighbor, I came to give him some glory. I came to lift up the name of God. How do we give him glory? We give him glory in our works based upon what we do for God. We give him glory in our witness based upon how we show for God. And we give God our work, our glory in our worship, which means that when we come, I don't care who you are, what you've done. We all got a responsibility to give God some worship. Look at somebody and tell them neighbor I came to worship him I, I came to give him glory I don't know what you come to do but I've 
come to lift up his name. He says we give him glory in church, but then he says we give him glory in Christ because you can't have church without Christ and you can't have Christ without the church because Christ died for the church. He sacrificed for the church. He was able to give his life up for the church, which means if you ain't got nothing else to get excited over, then get excited over what Christ has done and won't be unto the church the only time you celebrate his resurrection is when it comes to Easter but every time we gather if we don't see the cross if we don't see Christ then what's our worship about because no matter how tough things have been he's still been good to me lean over to somebody and tell him it's been about Jesus that's why I came to revival because I need to be reminded that it was in Christ we live in Christ we die and in Christ we have our everything shake somebody real quick and tell them it's got to be in church and in Christ but watch what he says that we don't just give him glory in Christ and in the church but then he gives a time frame for how long we should give him glory he doesn't just say give him glory for the hour so you in church he doesn't say just give him glory this week and this month he says forever and ever which means there should be no ending to the glory we give God that every opportunity we have we ought to be able to give God some glory lean over and tell somebody I don't care how long it takes you there is no expiration date on the glory that is due unto God because we didn't come here based upon a time schedule but whether we're in church whether we're in the parking lot whether we're on our job whether we're at our house it is our responsibility forever and ever to give God some glory. I got to get out of here. But he said unto him be the glory in the church and in Christ forever and ever. But then he concludes his doxology by saying amen. See I know why some of you can't shout. Because you don't know what amen really means. You think that amen is just some cute thing to say at the end of the benediction. But amen my brothers and sisters is a term that simply says say it is so. Or it shall be which means that when I say amen that I am co-signing on everything else that I prayed and praised about when I say amen I'm saying God you about to do exactly what we asked you to do which means that when I say amen I'm saying it's all ready done I gotta get out of here but grab someone by the hand real quick and shake it real good and say neighbor I wonder do you have good doxology do you know who you've been praying and praising for and if you are here tonight and that you've been seeking his face I got something to end you with tonight that God is so awesome that because you prayed to him and because you praised him he says I'm about to give you an amen which means that whatever you prayed for whatever you've been wanting to happen whatever you've asked or thought about he's about to make it come to pass so grab somebody new and look them square in the face and say neighbor I came to say amen I came to tell you that everything you pray for I'm touching and agreeing with you tonight amen amen over your family amen over your children amen over your thoughts amen over your desires amen over your church amen over your pastor look at somebody and tell them amen Oh, shut shut up, made me get happy. Oh, say, I believe that now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be the glory in the church in Christ forever and ever. I dare you to dance like you believe it. I dare you to shout like you believe it. Tell somebody your praise goes right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Look at somebody tell them right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here.
Everyone standing. Everyone standing. There was a lady. Everyone standing. Uh, she was a devout believer. And, uh, and her favorite passage of scripture was what was read tonight. But as she got older, they, her family put her in a hospital. And uh, her mind started to go. But every time the family would come and gather, she would recite a favorite scripture. Now I went to him. Was able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think. But, but as they kept coming and her mind kept kind of going, she was starting to lose the entirety of that. Now I'm unto him who was able to do. Then they would come back and she would only be able to say, Now I'm unto him who was able. But then she would, then it would come to now unto him. Until one of the last times they seen her, they saw her, but she could barely speak out of her mouth. So as they were getting ready to say goodbye to her, they could see her mouth moving, but they couldn't hear no words. And they walked over to her, and the grandson leaned his ear against her mouth. And he looked up and said, man, she's saying something, and I think I get what she's saying. They said, well, what's she saying? He said, all I keep hearing her say is him. Over and over, all she could say is him, him. And I don't know my brothers and sisters, but you can forget a whole lot of stuff. Not him. You may not can quote a whole lot of scripture, but don't forget him. You may forget some lyrics to some songs. Him woke me up this morning. Him starting me on my way. Leader of somebody tell him that's revival when I think of him and all he's done for me. My soul cry. Tonight is the last night of revival. And um, I want to pray over you if that's okay, Pastor. Last couple of nights I really have been since in the direction God wanted me to go and it really wasn't even my aim to even preach this message tonight I really was going to preach Isaiah 60 22 but for some reason God just had this on my spirit because your theme is to stretch it's to stretch and part of our stretching is also remembering because one cannot go forward if one has not yet progressed to understand where God has brought you from. So tonight, if you're willing and if you're able, I want you to come to this altar. I want to pray over you tonight to seal this moment of revival. It, it, um, if the Lord would have let me have my way, I would have preached Isaiah 60, 22, a simple passage that was been kind of my, my own personal passage for the last year or so. Isaiah 60, 22 says, and at the right time, the Lord will make it happen. Is that one simple verse? At the right time, the Lord will make it happen. But you can't know a Lord that will until you understand what he's already has done. And if I was going to preach Isaiah 60, 22 tonight, I was going to tag it, there's still time for it to happen. Still time. And maybe someone needs to hear that tonight. Because manna matters. Yeah, you got to memorialize that manna. Manna is God's faithfulness to us. But we'll never be able to embrace God until you know how to praise and honor God. And for all the grace that God has extended towards us, 
we owe him glory. That's really an uneven exchange. You get grace, he gets glory. See, the problem is sometimes we get too greedy. You want grace and glory. <laughs> but you can't take what is owed to God. So as we're stretching tonight and all those things, I really want to speak that over somebody's life tonight. That God is going to make it happen. He's going to make it happen. He will make it happen. He will make it happen. Can you bow your heads real quickly? I want to pray with you. And I want wherever you are, and I know we're at this corporate space, I need you to make an individual altar wherever you are. Because part of revival is not just hearing the word, but it's also becoming doers of its word. And the problem is oftentimes we come to church and we put so much pressure on the preacher to get us feeling good. When it's not just being receptive to what we hear, but being responsive to what we hear. Which means there's a personal responsibility that also has to fall upon the hearer to make sure that you do something with what you have received. So as your head is bowed, and I just want you to begin to, in your own way, as you are creating your own altar, you know what you need God to do. God is able to keep. God is able to provide comfort. God is able to give strength even in tough times. And I don't want anyone leaving tonight assuming that God has left you. Even in dark periods and dark moments, God's strength is still manifesting. In our weakness, God is making us strong. Even in our confusion, God is still providing some clarity. Even in our hurt, God is still giving us that bomb in Gilead. God is able to do it. Exceedingly abundantly more than you can even ask of. So I'm praying with you tonight that God's presence and power will overshadow you in such an incomprehensible way. That he will lift you even in dark periods. That he'll... He's still able. 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 God, we come tonight and we thank you for the conclusion of the last couple of days that you've allowed us to come and to gather in this sacred space for revival. And as we have been deemed under the banner of the assignment that the pastor has released in this house, we're stretching today. Stretching toward new possibilities, stretching towards new seasons, stretching towards new ways. But there is no real stretch until we've been anchored in what you have already done. So Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your consistency. And God, we thank you because when we know you, it helps us to worship you. So many have gathered at this altar tonight, God, with a myriad of things. Some, it's the best of time. For others, it's the worst of times. Some, it's good days. And for others, it's bad days. But the powerful thing is that in all of our experiences, you're still the same God. So, Lord, I pray now, God, that you would be to each and every individual in this place what they need you to be right now. Some need you to be a balm in Gilead. Some need you to be a rose of Sharon. Some, somebody needs you to be a bridge over troubled water. Somebody needs you to be a mender of broken hearts right now. Somebody needs you to be a way maker and a chain breaker, but... Whatever the people of God need tonight, we want you to just be that for somebody tonight. Lord, we're touching the degree and our hands are grasping the hand of someone that desperately needs you in this moment. 
So Lord, just as a reminder, we're squeezing that hand to let them know you're still real. We're squeezing that hand, letting them know you're still able. We're squeezing that land to let them know that you're still on the job. We're squeezing that hand to let them know you're still in control. We're squeezing that hand to let them know greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Lord, I pray for this house and this pastor. God, continue to shower upon this people and this pastor. Your incredible grace. Some called it amazing. We thank you for what you're doing at the Greater Peace Church. We lift up Pastor Neil. We lift up Lady Neil. We pray, God, that you would strengthen them in this moment. Give them the peace that passes all understanding. Give them the strength that only comes from you. We pray, God, that you would magnify his voice and vision continually to take this tribe of Zion even higher. We pray for those who are going through family turmoil. We pray for those who are experiencing loss that's inconceivable. Lord, we just pray that even though things can't change, we thank you that you're a God that walks with us through the lowest. You're the God that stands with us when we don't, need to, don't even know which way to go. So God, I thank you that you're the God of all comfort tonight. So Lord, I pray that every heart is once again turned towards you and we'll bless your name in this place. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hug four people on your way back to your seat. Tell them he's going to do it. 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 Tell him he's going to do it. Tell him he's going to do it. Come on, hug our sister. Hug our brother. Come on, encourage somebody. Tell him he's going to do it. Come on, encourage somebody. Tell him he's going to do it. Standing where you are, maybe there's one here tonight that has not accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's you tonight. You're in the sanctuary. You ought to come down now. We don't put chairs out. It's a private conversation. If you never accepted him, you ought to come tonight. You need a church home. You ought to come tonight. Maybe you're here for work, military, college. You can come on the watch care tonight. If you're in the house, you're in the house. You can come tonight. The door is open. Invitation extended. If you're watching virtually, no worries. All you have to do is text CONNECT GPBC to 84576. Our virtual ambassador Christ are waiting to receive you tonight. Maybe you're not in Columbus, maybe you're not in Georgia, or even the East Coast. No worries. This is a global ministry. We believe you can be a member wherever you are. And so if you desire to connect tonight, Text connect GPBC to 84576. Is there anyone in the house tonight? Anyone virtually? Will you come? Will you come? It's a good time to worship him. It's a good time to remind yourself and your neighbor that he's able. Somebody ought to know he's able tonight.
to get that healing tonight. You ought to get that miracle tonight. You ought to get that breakthrough tonight. You ought to receive it tonight. Somebody's getting it. Somebody's getting that breakthrough. Just. Just, just, just tap somebody next to you and tell him he is able. He's able. Yeah. He's able. He's. He's able. He's able. Whatever it is, he's able. Whatever you're going through, he's able. Whatever you're dealing with, he's able. Whatever keeps you up at night, he's able. Whatever the negative report is, he's able. Whatever you're struggling with, he's able. Whatever problem you can't solve, he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Yes, he is. Doctors may shake their head, but he's able. He's able. Friends can't help you out, but he's able. Yes, God. He's able. You can't fix it yourself, but he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. We're standing. We're getting ready to go home. Give God praise for the word tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give God praise for the word tonight. Let us give God praise and celebrate the messenger tonight. And last night, my friend, my brother, Pastor Charles Goodman, you can do better than that, a greater peace. Celebrate this man of God for the word. Amen. We thank God for you, man, and for that relevant word, man. Thank God for letting the Lord use you. Amen. And again, as I often say, he's one of our nation's best preachers, a national preacher that is still such a humble guy. So I thank you again for the friendship. Thank you for answering the call of a little pastor like me. Again, we say thank you again. So good to see Pastor Flakes. So good to see Pastor Sherman, Pastor Washington. Give them a hand. Thank you all, brothers, for coming. Amen. And give yourself a hand. Amen for receiving this word. Amen. Just look at somebody and say, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. I needed this. My Lord, amen. We're just thankful for each and every one of you tonight. We're going to allow Pastor Goodman to come and give us closing remarks, benediction. Amen. Again, we just thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, leaders. Thank you, members. Thank this praise team. Give them a hand singing these blessing us. Amen. Our directress of worship and ours. Thank you, directress, for your leadership. Thank God for our assistant directress. Amen. Rashada King, amen, for coming back to see us. Amen. And Brother Josh, always there. Brother Jacoby, amen. They're faithful. Amen. Amen. I think we take for granted sometimes people using their gifts for God. And as Pastor Goodman said on last night, they were just rotating instruments. And sometimes we take for granted the talents that God gives people. And so we thank them for using their talents this week. Amen. And again, thank God for you, Greater Peace. Thank God for you. Let us give a hand of celebration, Pastor Charles Goodman, as he comes to close us out. Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Neil, my friend and my brother. I'm grateful again for you, my dear friend, and to all of you. The Greater Peace, once again, may God grace you and bless you is my prayer. Let us pray. God, thank you. If we had 10,000 tongues, it would be insufficient.
So Lord, we're going to leave this place better than once we came. Our desire is from this moment is not we're going to we're not going to let revival just end in the sanctuary. But Lord, make us a sanctuary. Lord, for you. So, Lord, because revival has begun in us, let revival now move to our homes and our schools and our community. Because of the fire we felt in this place, let us go set the world on fire. Let us do our absolute best to bring you glory so that others will see what you've done in us and want to be with you. Lord, we pray now that your son be lifted high in all that we do. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Lift those hands. Repeat at me. Say, because I've been blessed, I'm going to be a blessing. Hug about 274 people and tell them I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it tonight. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace.